one and all. A very warm welcome to all of you to the Avahan 2021 lecture series. Today, we have with us Mira Eda, one of India's rising stars in the world of motorsport. Mira has seen success from a very young age itself. Through consistent performances, she made her way to the JK Racing Championship 2014 to become the youngest Formula 4 girl driver. Continuing to improve every year, Mira became the F4 Rookie Champion of the Year 2016 and was honored by FMSCI, the governing body for motorsports in India. Further, going further ahead, in 2017, she became the first Indian woman to race in the Euro JK series, one of the highest classes of formula racing in our country. And in the, and in the most recent times, 2019, she won her first ever international podium by finishing first in the ladies category in the round two of FIA F4 Southeast Asian Championship at Sepang. Mira, you, you're indeed an inspiration for many of us and it's quite an honor to have you here. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I really hope we can have a good, great conversation and uh, you know, just let the people know more about motorsports in general. Indeed, indeed. All right, so my first question to you is, being an Indian, now we know that in India, motorsports is not as prominent as it is perhaps in the UK or any of that, any of the other countries. We don't have too many probably teams that are really based in India when it comes to racing. So forget the fact that if uh, formula racing is male dominated and you're a girl and you made it to that. Let's start with you being an Indian. What was your story and how did you start off with racing? Like being an Indian, what did it take to get to that level where you are right now? And to make a well, career in I, something as unconventional as racing? Well, I would say it wasn't that easy, but I would surely say it was a lot of fun because that was something that I I love doing. Um, so back in 2009, my dad started this go-karting track in Vadodra, where I used to live. Um, and it was just out of his passion for speed and cars because in his time... Uh, you know, he couldn't uh, get into motorsports professionally. So he thought, why not make a track and, you know, just like have fun over there with my family and make sure that, you know, people outside in Barodra get a chance to be a part of motorsports in some uh, way. So I used to just look at my brother's drive over there while they were having fun. And I was just like eight years old. And I was like, even I want to drive, you know, like why should my brothers always have fun? And I used to love, you know, uh, going on rides with my dad. So, like, you know, the passion and the blood, uh, you know, we all love, you know, speed. So, um, I started get, uh, getting trained and just like, you know, basics and four strokes. I used to drive with my brothers for fun. I started improving and I started racing with them. Uh, so, when I turned nine, my dad saw that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Obviously, not like the best, but I'm pretty good at uh, fighting with my brothers and competing with them. So he asked me if I wanted to get into professional motorsports and as a nine-year-old child, I had no idea that, you know, what professional motorsports is. For me, it was just bunking schools and, you know, going out, tra getting to travel as much as I could and meeting new people and most importantly, racing. So I went ahead and saw one of the races in Pune that was the National Road Tax Championship happening over there. And that's when I saw that, you know, there are no females out there. So... As a nine-year-old child, I asked my dad that, you know, like every other sport, uh, do we have like different categories, like for males and females? And he told me that if you're going to race, you're going to race with the boys. There's no categories uh, in motorsports. It's, you know, like male and female racing together. Uh, and that was something that really, you know, I don't know, at that point of time, I had no idea what women empowerment or what, you know, it's an unconventional thing for women. For me, it was just like, okay, this is going to be fun. I get to race with more boys and I get to, you know, like compete with them at an equal level. So I got professionally trained for like a, a weekend or so and then another two, three weekends of practice. And um, I was there in my first ever national racing championship. But obviously, you know, people were not expecting a girl out there. And uh, the Indian society back then had no idea what more sports is all about. For them, it was like a girl driving a car. It's, it's not meant for, like, you know, meant for each other. 
So they used to tell my dad this one thing that, uh, you know, why are you spending so much money behind a girl when she's going to marry someday and leave you? And my dad used to say that uh, even though she's a girl, if she has the dreams and if she really wants to pursue racing in future, I'm going to make sure she that she gets the chance to do it. I don't want to be the person to hold her back. And um, I, after I grew up, that's when I realized that, you know, this was something that was very serious, that people never used to like a girl out there. But um, as a child, I just wanted to get out there on the track and have fun all these comments never really you know got to me and i just wanted to keep improving myself the boys wouldn't like the fact that a girl is racing with them or you know she's overtaking them so they would try to push me off track but it was in the initial years obviously even they were young and you know they were not uh, so used to it but now if i see uh, talking about the indian aspect uh, it has changed like totally and I feel so lucky that I have seen the whole process from like you know boys not accepting girls and now they're just like finally you know uh, just be like even though she's a girl she's a racer at the first place when she's in the car and uh, that's how they see us and I mean that's that's very important and I feel very lucky to have all those boys around me who doesn't see me as a female anymore and they they compete with me at an equal level. So I feel India has changed uh, quite a lot in terms of, you know, uh, seeing women racers and, you know, looking at them as not an unconventional thing anymore. So, yeah, that's my view and that's how I started racing. So as we just heard that uh, your initial racing career began because you wanted to have fun with your brothers. So actually, what motivated you when the times got tough during training or anywhere else? Like, who were your inspirations? Honestly, I never had any inspiration when I was young. I just had my dad up there. Um, you know, even in trains, uh, since the professional racing tracks were around one kilometers and the track that I have was just around 500 meters. So, you know, I had to like to get that stamina to build up to, you know, like compete in like uh, 15 laps in the one kilometer. I had to do around 50 to 100 laps in one go over here at my track. And he used to be so excited, you know, just to make me drive on the track for 100 laps. And I'll be like, Dad, come on, you know, like, I am just a child. You can't, like, you know, make me drive so much. But just looking at him being so happy and so excited and so enthusiastic about it um, just made me happy and, you know, made me feel that, okay, I love doing this. My dad loves doing it. So let's just give it a try. And he used to always, you know, push me as much as I could. And he would always be there around me when things got tough. Even now, you know, not, not every year I get the opportunity where I can go ahead and win races. But my dad always told me this one thing that, Mira, you have come this far. You have won races and you have got podiums and you have worked really hard. Now, if you give up after working so hard, nothing will be worth it. And um, all your efforts will just go to waste. So um, that just keeps motivating me every time. And looking at my dad work so hard uh, for me, me being a, from a middle class family, um, racing is quite expensive. And, you know, him working so hard to make sure that I get every opportunity that I have, I need to get up there at the level, uh, every equipment that I need. Just looking at him working so hard and my family working so hard around to make everything possible for me was my inspiration. And I think it's going to be my inspiration even in future. Fantastic story. So like, since we're on the topic, I've heard from um, in interviews from various professional drivers that they say that during the, they often tend to lose their childhood because they're into racing and they're into karting. Yeah. So yeah. what was your childhood like? And do you agree with this? <laughs> How is it different from a normal kid, kids like us? I had never really had a childhood, I would say. I used to never go to parties. I used to never go to family functions. I never used to go to school most of the times. I used to write my own exams all alone. With So I had nobody else to copy from. And, you know, like every like no, everything that a normal child would do, I, I never got a chance to do it. Um, but I think, you know, uh, it's quite different because I got to travel a lot. 
I got to do something at a very young age that I used to love doing and I used to enjoy that and that used to give me a real happiness rather than just studying, right? Um, and then, you know, just meeting new people out there on the track, you know, hanging out with the boys and just improving and, you know, keep pushing myself was the advantage. So I still keep telling myself that even though you're giving up a lot of things right now, in future, it'll, you know, everything will come back to you. So I think um, I never had a normal childhood, but I'm glad that I got that childhood because it has made me grow up at a very early age compared to my friends. And I have a totally different mentality and totally different mindset towards things compared to my friends. And um, even now when we talk about college and, you know, future life, I think I have, you know, much more uh, sorted plans for my future compared to my friends. And it is all because, you know, racing taught me to be mature and I'm racing taught me that I need to have backup plans all the time. If I'm giving my best into racing, I couldn't accept the fact that, you know, people will come and say that, yeah, she's spending money, uh, spending her dad's money and she's not doing well in academics. So, you know, just that fact that people would come and get a chance to say something like that. I used to work hard and study during, you know, like just like 10 days before my exams every night and work hard. So I think, you know, I have learned how to balance both the things. And it's all because of racing that I am who I am right now. So I'm really glad that I didn't get that childhood, but I think it was meant for it. So uh, as I said, that racing is not as popular a sport in India as it is in other places, other European yes. countries. Uh, so you being a professional racer, what is your current, um, sin what is the current, what is your take on the current scenario of motorsports in our country? I wouldn't say that it's, um, it's like really good because uh, obviously because of the COVID situations, things have changed. Um, we don't know when our racing is going to get back. Uh, most of our races last year got postponed and, you know, it was a mess. But um, I think it's growing. From the time that I started racing till now, we have a lot more opportunities uh, available at a very easy platform and we get a lot of teams to support us. Not just support, you know, like you, you can go ahead and uh, do testings or get training easily wherever you are. If you are in, uh, you know, Mumbai, you get teams out there. If you are in South India, you get teams out there. If you are in Gujarat, I have my own academy. In Delhi, we have. So it's it's like in most of the you know uh, states we have a lot of uh, training uh, academies out there for people to get into the sport so i think at a grassroots level it's quite a good uh, change but um, at a professional level where we race uh, we don't really have any more opportunities left um, i had to go down again uh, from after racing the jk uva series uh, back to the LGB category because the cars are not available in India anymore and the cars were old enough. So, you know, they were breaking down after 2019 races. So we couldn't get them back in India. So now um, I would say we just need a little bit more, you know, exposure from the companies and, you know, uh, racing teams from outside or racing championships uh, where we can collaborate with them and get, uh, you know, the races or championships into India so that we have that opportunity to race. Um, we just have very minimum, you know, like basic uh, championships going on right now. That is the JKT National Racing Championship for Formula Cars. In that, we have two categories, the Novice Cup and the LGB category. Beat MRF, you have like 1600s, 1300s, and then the IJTC and BW Cars and the BW Championship. For bikes as well, uh, I think the bike scenario is quite good. We have drag racing, then we have the on-track racing, we have the off-road racing. But uh, for the formula cars, I would say it's, it's a long way to go for us in India. Uh, so Meera, as you mentioned, the opportunities are sort of limited when it comes to India for motorsports. Why do you think racing is not such a big thing in India? And what is it that we don't have and other countries have? Is it the perception or is it just companies not coming what is both. in your it's both it goes hand in hand the perception that used you, you know when i started racing perception was that okay you know whatever you race on the roads like you know driving fast driving riding bikes like at really high speeds racing or uh, illegally all of that is motorsports for people 
so you know that was the whole different perception about people although now it's changing slowly because of the way our community is trying hard to put out the content for them uh, with the way that we are trying to get more audiences to our races so that they can get a chance to see what real racing is um so yeah you know that perception is still you know st- stuck in people's mind that okay it's risky it's dangerous it's expensive not everybody you know it's only meant for the rich people not for the common people so i think all those things needs to change and we are trying our best from our part that we can create more opportunities for people to get into the motorsport level at a very basic level and at the same time when people have such perceptions you know companies wouldn't want to risk you know sponsoring us or creating uh championships conducting championships uh where people won't come and watch so uh i think both goes hand in hand and obviously things need to change it uh, people need to change their perception towards motorsports in general and people who are already a part of motorsports be it racers or race and you know like team owners or team organizers race organizers all of them need to start working on you know getting out to the people connecting with them and you know making sure that they get the real you know view about racing and motorsports in india us indian fans also await yeah. more narayan karthik games and daruwalas exactly exactly right so um, like another thing that i think is involved with racing is the amount of financial sort of back that back of that's needed and a lot of money goes into it so do you think the future for motorsports in india is bright in terms of that as well because we need a lot of financial support as you said companies need to come in so what do you think is like how how is the future shaped up for motorsports in india what could be I done i think it's it's got it's gonna change for sure uh, we are growing as a country in motorsports we have racers out there you know driving at international levels finally in the last 2 3 years and you know they are making india proud so you know in that sense people more people are getting to know about motorsports in india so i think the future is bright obviously companies are starting to come up and you know sponsor like the best racers out of india at least or you know creating uh, collaborations with the race teams or race organizers to you know sponsor them and get you know like basics uh, basic racing happening in india uh, talking about myself i was very lucky that you know in 2017 when i became india's first female to race in the jk euro series red bull as a brand could recognize me and get me on board with them and you know that was a start as well that you know i was the first one to get into the formula racing field in red bull in india and uh, after that uh, red bull has been trying to get you know like go kart championships happening around the country every year and then they got jehan as well on board so now i think uh, it's changing big companies are getting into the sport but it's still going to take a lot of time um, maybe around 2 3 years more for you know people to start recognizing and companies international companies to start recognizing us and sponsoring us okay so um uh, i'd like to know as i play football uh, so what is different in racing as a sport like compared to football or any other sport how is racing different i would say as athletes there is nothing really you know different from other sports because yes uh, we need a lot of fitness we need a lot of stamina we need a lot of strength and so we have to work out quite a lot and fitness plays a huge role into racing what i have heard like you know people who have like no knowledge about water sports they come and tell me that yeah you just have to sit in a car and drive and i'm like really that's what you think uh, so when i started racing i was the same yeah and i i started getting tired after a point of time in the race and the last few laps are the most crucial ones and i used to you know start uh, losing stamina and then people would just come ahead and overtake me and go and i lose positions that's when i realized that i need to start building up my my strength as well and in the past few years 
I think my fitness has helped me quite a lot uh, to get ahead and fight in the top positions. Because when I started the formula cars, uh, I was at the back. I couldn't catch anybody. And I used to be so tired. My mom used to, you know, have used to come and massage me, massage my shoulders after every race because I was so dead. Um, but now I feel that I can control the car at such high speeds as well. Because, you know, if we drive at the speed of 230 kilometers per hour, and then you suddenly have to drop down the speed to around 120 kilometers per hour, it needs a lot of strength. And it, you need to hold that steering and you need to turn with such high speeds. Um, so I think fitness is quite important. And that's the only thing that's different for, you know, like athletes that we really have to work a lot more on to our strength because you know especially the, the core because if we get into any serious accidents the core is the main area where all of the you know accident uh, effects gonna go so i think having a strong back having a strong neck and the core is very important and we have to keep working a lot more compared to the other athletes in that aspect but other than that i don't think that's you know anything else is different uh, from a normal athlete's life we have to eat healthy we have to work out every day we have to work on our mental fitness we have to be alert so it's all the same things right and i think as you already mentioned a lot of people have this misconception misconception that racing is not a sport like it's just sitting in the car and driving it around so i guess that exactly. answers it pretty well and like Hi. as you mentioned uh, this is something which would vary like for outside viewers and as a racer so when you're racing like for a viewer it it's quite scary at times i mean you guys are hitting speeds that are unimaginable so there's always that risk of you know even if something goes wrong even in a millisecond you it it could prove fatal there's always this fear factor especially as a viewer but as a racer what goes through your head when you're racing i mean is there a fear factor in your head is mine as well or do you just neglect it and go in not at all not at all um when i started uh, i used to be a little scared uh, of the boys pushing me off track but then i just got that anger in me that okay now i can't let the boys push me off track and the fear just came out and then i was you know i had to learn how to balance the combination about you know being aggressive and then when i need to be very calm and just be patient to wait for the opportunity so if i talk about you know the same thing that you say that it was it looks super scary from the outside but um i recently had an accident i think that was one of my most serious and scariest accidents that i've ever had in my journey till like in plus in the last 12 years so it was in the lgb category in january um I was around maybe around 100 at the speed of 100 and I was turning. A guy, uh, you know, couldn't brake and he came into me and he uh, touched my tire, my car flipped. And that was the first time my car flipped. And I was like, okay, something's happening. I don't know what's happening. And then I see my car flip. So I was like, okay, this is happening. So I just hold my hand like this and I was very calm. So I knew that was happening. So there was no point panicking after that. So I just stayed calm. I got, you know, the the marshals came. They told me. They talked to me. They are like, they asked me if I could get out. But it was very, you know, risky because my head was the uh, the body part that was hanging uh, right below, and I couldn't risk getting out on my own. So they had to wait um, for around five minutes for the crane to come and pull me out. And um, it's all about being calm, and it's all about being alert. and knowing what you're doing in the in, in the right time and i think uh, for us racers we have accepted the fact that we are always risking our lives on the race track and if we have that fear i think we are not going to be the best versions of ourselves we will you know be pulling ourselves in the back uh, of our mind always while we are racing if we are scared so i think you know all of us as racers we are not scared we just you know we have got used to the fact that yeah we are risking our lives but we need to be alert and we work on our you know mental fitness of being alert and you know being calm and knowing having the situation under control so yeah that's my point amazing okay uh, like i'd like to know a bit about the race day so 
like what's your routine like just before a race like i've seen hamilton walk on his scooty like travel on yeah. his scooty what is your thing that you do i have two three things that i do uh and i keep you know like trying to improvise things and see if things work out for me i've tried music that doesn't really work out for me uh, i've tried reading books that doesn't work out for me um so what i try to do is just relax right before the race there's no point stressing out about what's going to happen because you don't have any control before the race starts so i just go hang out with my friends wish them luck we wish each other luck we just laugh a little so that's like you know we all are calm and then we get into the cars i get into my car i pray i have a small um our a god idol that's like fixed right under my uh, gear shift so i can see it and then i can touch it right before the race so i you know just close my eyes i wear my helmet and i'll pray and then i'll just start trying to feel connected to the car and i'll start talking to my car that okay you know what let's just do it let's go have fun and then i just try to imagine the whole track once that you know okay i'm i'm at this corner this is what i'm doing just like you know one quality lap like my best lap and um that's all i'll do this and then i'll just sit in the car and just calm down and like look around at people but once i'm at the on the track on the grid everything else is doesn't really matter i can't even see my dad you know like telling me to go fast from the pit lane and i'll be like i don't know who's that i'll just you know i can't even see him most of the times and my dad will when i come out he'll be like i was telling you to go fast why don't you look, why weren't you looking at me and i'll be like i couldn't see you because for me the only focus is on the track and you know what i'm going to do how am i going to deal with the guy behind me and at the same time try to you know catch the guy in front of me and make a move so for i think every racer uh, once we are in the car everything else is just blurred out and we are just into a different zone where it's just us and the car and the race track Right. And this following up on that question, how is race day different from your usual days? I mean, do you wake up with a lot of, say, nervousness, excitement, and like, how, how is it usually different from your usual days? It's mix. It's like every race weekend is different for me. It depends on um, if I have car issues, I'll be stressed. If I don't have car issues, if everything is under control, um, I'll be happy. I'll be playing around everywhere with my friends. i'll be laughing around if i'm stressed i'll just go sit next to my car i'll sit on my mechanics uh, head and i'll be like come on get this thing done what is wrong with the car and um, yeah so it's like every different situation uh, but most of the time it's mixed that we're trying to stay calm but we are trying to you know prepare ourselves into that mindset as well one thing that really helps me i mean i'm sure it's like super weird uh but you know eating sweets in the morning like having waffles and whipped cream and everything just makes me super calm before my race weekend and you know it, it's just like every racer you know has that one thing that they that we all want to eat right before the race and that's my thing so every morning right before the race i'll eat that and then i'll go for the race and then not eat most of that and most of the time i just sit alone and work on the car or either just go around playing so yeah uh, that's like the normal routine but i think you know it depends on every day situation uh oh. so talking about your usual days uh, what do you do in your free time when you are away from racing like uh, racing is a sport which is on the weekends right so yeah, what do you yeah. do in, in your free time do you have a hobby other than racing i usually don't have a lot of time to even sit around um, most of the time so basically i have my college when i'm at home so i have to like wake up early in the morning go to college uh, for like 5 to 6 hours and then go to the gym uh, for another 2 hours and then come back home around what uh for 9 o'clock ish and then maybe read a book and do my assignments uh, but now due to the covid situation i'm not going to college so my normal routine is just waking up uh, you know reading books uh, watching uh, documentaries or watching dramas just like every other person is doing right now um but then um 
yeah just you know talking to friends about racing about what we are planning for this year because now it's high time we have to like decide what teams that we want to drive for and it's been like super serious in the last year the racing has been very competitive so i have to be like you know always discussing what we are up to so most of the time goes around in this then spending time with the family is very important in this time right now and then just working out and maybe if you know i have time left or you know um in the afternoon drive on the simulator a little but not that much i don't really get a lot of time to do that but yeah just practicing or else either i come to the track and drive my rotax over or around the track that's like normal routine for me right so the thing what i wanted to know is uh because of covid and the lockdown everything's been on a standstill including racing especially so yeah. how 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 have you coped with it like as a racer did you feel like you were getting rusty and there was lack of practice or how was it for you for me i think uh, it wasn't like that i think i am lucky that i didn't have you know i i didn't have that feeling that okay i need to get back to the track right away i'm i'm getting rusty uh, but i just had you know i was very calm that i knew some, at some point of time the racing is going to get back so instead of you know panicking about the situation i just tried to improve myself as much as i could tried to work out uh, even more and you know start eating healthy during the lockdown and then reading books was something you know helped me a lot uh, during the whole lockdown and then as i said simulator so i think you know uh, i have been lucky enough that the lockdown and the covid situation didn't really affect me that much um, but it was all because i i knew what i was supposed to do and i knew how to handle such situations before and i think every not everybody you know could do the same thing uh, but uh, it's all about prioritizing things and planning things out instead of panicking in the moment and that's what i did and um, i made sure that right before my lgb cat like the main race championships that i was participating in i made sure that i tried and you know did won the, the whole championship of mrf 1300 to just get the car feeling of driving the car again and you know get the feeling of being in the race and being in under that much pressure so that once i was back into the lgb category i was very calm and i was back into the zone so nothing really felt rusty at that point of time so i just planned it out properly great um how's the practice or the workout like uh, for a race or how are the workouts uh workouts for me or uh, even as a race or we have to focus as i said before we have to focus on like the core and the strength a lot even stamina is quite important so personally on a personal level i like doing different workouts um uh, I don't like running a lot so I try to do skipping as much as I can and then just trying different workouts that is the TRX workout or you know a strength workout or just different workouts I keep trying to do that uh, but at least 2 hours a day is very important uh, and making sure that I don't take a lot of breaks during the workout uh, is is something that I keep telling myself and then drinking a lot of water because it just you know uh makes your body into that zone that you know when you're on the track you don't really get that much de- dehydrated because you're mentally prepared for it and um the practice uh, we don't usually get to practice that much except the simulator because i stay in gujarat and then traveling from gujarat to south india is quite expensive just for like practice and uh we have to like another you know rent the whole track with the team so uh, it goes around 45 to 50000 and then traveling and stay and everything is extra so it doesn't really make sense from practice so i just try to stay at home or just you know drive on the simulator or come back to the track and drive the go kart because driving go karts anybody can do that and you know even formula 1 racers get back to the go kart just for fun just to get that feeling of you know the rush so yeah i love being on the track and driving go karts or even the you know just getting the fear out again uh is like driving riding the bikes on the off road track and you know just risking it all the time so yeah that's that's what is practice and working out for me uh i have seen uh like racers have really thick necks 
Like, yeah. is that is that uh, something which is related to the sport or is it just a yeah most of the time i would say my neck is not like that thick <laughs> uh, i'm just like thin uh, but uh, most of them yeah many a times you have that because we we have to work a lot on our uh, neck because um, you know we fo- face so much of g force and then we have to like keep our heads in place and uh, the neck gets really strained while we are driving so uh, we have to do different workouts uh, for the neck as well and then again you know while i am at home i have to like keep working i have to give talks like this so i'm always on the laptop or on the on the phone so having that neck strength is very important and i think it's just that you know that workout uh, changes how your neck looks after a point of time <laughs> right and i wanted to ask something more uh, coming back to covid and the lockdown so uh, taking the example of formula 1 they resumed racing and we had grand prix like at a time when covid was still quite at its maybe not yeah. at, at its peak but yeah it was still quite prominent but it was still there yeah yeah so what some of the drivers were quite against it some of it were like all right it's time to start again what was your take and what is your take like do you think it was a good thing to resume it or do you think they could have waited see, a little longer see they took the necessary precautions even for in like for our races in india we were just supposed to travel with one person except us we have were not allowed to have families around us uh, then we were supposed to get a check you know a uh, temperature check uh, you know everything blood pressure check everything uh, right before entering the track every day um even the hotels that we were staying in we had to make sure that it's you know like properly clean and everything is perfect and uh, it was the organizers who suggested the hotels making sure everything was sorted out over there we had to check our temperatures there and then even in the teams you know we were no we didn't have a lot of mechanics there were very limited limited people that we were supposed to have around us and as soon as you get out of the car you have to wear the mask again or else you'll get a penalty around 1000 to 5000 bucks which we wouldn't want to spend so uh, we had to you know always wear masks uh, we had officials uh, especially to keep a eye on us all the time we used to have sanitizers so i think even in formula 1 it was the same that we had to take necessary precautions and if we have necessary precautions i think it, it it's okay um and the government as well you know the organizers made sure that they are following all the government rules so yeah i think it was a good decision because everybody needed formula 1 back even the fans even as racers everybody even the teams needed the, to get back to racing because it was high time and um yeah it it was the same for us as well we couldn't stay any longer sitting at home we are not used to sitting at home at all we are always on the race tracks so yeah i think it was a good decision hmm. um how do you do you remember your first podium your first ever podium in karting i remember my first ever win though it was like, like epic um uh, my first ever win was in 2012 um uh, in karting so i was in the pre finals i actually won the pre finals uh, i was the fastest as well um, but due to some technical issues i got disqualified uh, and i was supposed to start the race at the last position and that was the first ever time that i actually won any pre final or any race so you know it was a huge thing for me and then getting disqualified was very disappointing i was very upset and my team and my parents my team teammates everybody told me that mira look now it's up to you we'll give you the best car uh, obviously they get, they're like we'll give you the best car in terms of having a lot of straight power but into the corners you won't have a lot of speed so you have to deal with it but we'll make sure that you have the perfect setup but now it's up to you do you want to be a mediocre racer and you know finish around in the middle pack or do you want to actually start from the back and win the race and i was like okay I have no idea what got into me that day. Uh I was crazy. I uh we had around 15 drivers on the grid. I was like the 16th driver um uh, and I overtook around half of them in just one corner. And uh in just another 3 laps I was leading the race 
i knew my team my um, the you know like the second person uh, who was actually leading the race that was like my biggest competitor i knew that you know once i'm ahead of him or once i'm around him he's going to start making mistakes he's going to panic so i knew his weak points and i attacked at that point of time and he started making mistakes i took a huge lead and uh, i won that race with a huge lead and everybody was shocked so when i came back into the pits it was just my team my parents my mechanics who were jumping around whereas everybody was just shocked that you know meera has never driven like this before like how did a girl actually manage to start at the last position and get back to the first position with a huge lead so i think you know just seeing that shock on people's face that's when i decided that i want to continue racing as a profession as a career till then i was just like okay this is passion and i want to continue as much as i can and i didn't want to give my best in it but after that thing after you know proving myself i think i proved it to myself on my own in in like my head that okay i can do this and that's when i decided that now it's high time give it your best and take it as a career right and you recently won the first ever like your first ever international podium as well in yes in the time. women's so, category in formula 4 exactly so how like did you sort of look back at your first ever win in karting and how how different was the feeling or was it the same it was just another win how was it it's it's uh, i would say the same feeling that i always get whenever i'm on the podium it's like being the happiest person on the planet uh, that yeah finally i did that and no the others couldn't do it uh, so being on the podium always makes me happy and uh, you know i got the first ever podium in women's category from india that was huge because i was not planning to go into that race um uh, i just like you know i got a call from the organizer on wetness day and he's like okay can you come race uh, i'm giving you a little less budget compared to the others and i think i was like okay that makes sense let's do it and then we went to malaysia on thursday and arrived on friday morning uh, we practiced i did like two or three practice sessions that's all and i was there in the race and by the last race i finally managed to get back to the pace of other drivers and you know i won the women's champion women's category in that so i think uh, and uh, i could manage to pull it off in a very nice way so yeah I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so, what are your future plans? What are the prospects that you aim for? Uh, I I I am totally open to doing anything possible in racing. Uh, I know once you get out of India, it's very expensive. So, if I say uh, my Indian racing championship is around ten lakhs per year, uh, my me driving internationally either in USA. for like a whole formula for championship it comes to around one and a half crores <laughs> it's like a huge jump <laughs> to uh, get that budget out and you know get more sponsors and everything is really you know very hard right now um so i'm totally open to driving any car possible uh, but obviously uh, in the next two years i'm at least targeting that i can get into um formula 3 and just start to practice testing as much as i can and then compete in the championship because i don't i don't want to just go ahead and jump right away into formula 3 and just you know not perform well so i want to do a few testing before that so that i'm comfortable with the car and i know what to do and then start competing so in the at least next two years that's the target or if that doesn't really work out at least have few testings and then just compete in formula 4 for one more year and then shift into that so yeah amazing and uh, there was one thing i want to know so you mentioned sponsors formula racing sponsors is like a major thing we i mean for for play, for sort of races to make it big you need to have good backing you need to have good sponsors so how does that yeah. work i mean can any random kid just dream of it that yeah i want to be a racer because there's a lot of things sponsorships money everything in play uh, so you know I have my own academy where people come and tell me that I want to become a Formula One racer. Will people give me money if I, you know, start racing? And we're like, I have been racing for twelve years. I have three sponsors till now. 
and i can just barely manage to get into indian racing and you know like do one championship so it is very difficult to get sponsors in india as i said before as well that companies are not really into it yet uh but i think it's it's a process you have to you know make sure that uh you have a very strong social media base uh you give out the correct content out there to the people and get followers and get fans to follow you because companies most of the time look at how they can take the advantage of us as athletes and you know uh, get the correct word out and uh, what all advantages we can give to them uh so like uh, you know we can give them branding on a car we can give them branding on our overalls and everything we can get to their events and you know conduct events with them which they haven't done before into motor sports because people like you know all this uh, off road things or we go on the track and feeling that rush for once so you know we have to like be really smart with dealing with sponsors and what we can give to them because uh, you never know a company might be interested in it but you know they are just not sure how they can be benefited from us so we have to like put up the right uh, you know image in front of them that this is all the things that we can give you and you can take advantage of that so yeah it's it's quite difficult but it's growing yeah uh, so talking about sponsors we have been associated with red bull so i'd like to know how did they support you and how much have they helped you in furthering your career i would say i have been very lucky to have red bull on my side because uh, we both believe that you know going out and doing crazy things is very important in life and uh, we just want to improve the motorsport situation you know situation in india so we have like two uh, karting events on my name that happens every year that is the red bull kart fight and the red bull catch up the red bull catch up happens on women's day for just women's and the winner of that race who like competes against me all of them and then whoever wins that race uh, gets a chance to either you know be a part of my racing team or you know uh, go ahead and on a fully sponsored trip to watch one of the formula 1 races by red bull uh, the kart fight event happens every year we get like uh, 20 top 20 uh, racers like amateur racers from uh, around the country uh, and we let them race and whoever is the winner gets a chance to again go and watch the races and uh, we have been planning to you know uh, just just give them the right way into motor sports uh, by just you know helping them out at the basic levels and i as a, i have my own racing team so i try to help them out by bringing them into rotax training them into four strokes and then in strokes and then giving them a opportunity because i know that you know it's very difficult for a middle class person to get into um, like racing in general so yeah uh, you know with red bull we have been doing such amazing events but other than that as a racer they have helped me a lot uh, we usually have you know they sponsor me we uh, i get the fees athlete fees but other than that they help me out with you know if i want to go ahead and get professionally trained by some professional in you know some other country they'll help me out with that they'll uh, you know uh, make sure that i go ahead and go there and get that thing done or if i want to have like a test done like a health checkup done like profesh by professional form you know like high professionals from red bull they'll get that done uh, they you know like i have my own this like they gave out they gave me all my racing overalls and everything so in in that sense you know they are helping me a lot into financial uh, things aspect as well as well as helping me get more of uh, sponsors who can be related to red bull and then we can collaborate and then making sure that i get opportunities to go out and race uh, in other countries as well and there is one more thing i'd like to know you being associated with red bull and that sort of reminds me of yesterday's bahrain grand prix qualifying so max verstappen finished first he's p1 so who is your yeah, favorite i'm so happy <laughs> is um, it verstappen yeah um, because you know he he's young and you know he's that like crazy mind he's aggressive you know that if if you see him in the rear view mirror he's going to get past you 
he'll do anything to get past you and uh, you can't really do anything you know that aggression and that calmness that needs i think i really look up to him because that's what i need in myself as a racer to have that balance all the time and i want people to you know have the same fear that they have for max like the other racers have for max i want my competitors to have the same fear in me like when i am behind them so i try to you know like look up to him and uh, look up to his driving style and try to implement all of that into my my driving style and see if that works out for me so yeah i i yeah, so do you think that. max could win the world championship this year or fingers crossed i really hope because this time it, it it's really close uh, i was watching the poly and we were all discussing like in the group that this time it's like super close uh, even you know max and lewis are going to fight for sure the cars are not almost like you know but very close to each other like in terms of pace so let's hope for the best but i'm sure this year is going to be insane in terms of racing that's also yeah yeah mira so now we are uh, getting a bit close to the end so let's we'll wrap it up uh thank you mira for such a lovely time and for such a fascinating conversation uh we at avan okay. iit b are extremely grateful to have you and wish you all the best for your future endeavors Thank you thank you so much i really enjoyed talking to you guys and to all the viewers out there if you ever want to get into motor sports you can contact me and i'll be very happy to help you guys out into that so please feel free to you know contact me whenever you want i'm always there on instagram to get in touch and please follow your dreams that's the most important and enjoy life